Welcome. In today's video, we are going over the Run minigame that was inspired by the Run minigame built by Isco85 on the Hermitcraft server. This will not be a block for block tutorial as this minigame is quite large. Instead, we will go over each component of it and how it works. There will also be a world download available. This game is built on randomizers, including the front door, which is currently set up to only accept diamonds. If you place any other item in here, it will not open. It will only open if you put a diamond in. And as you can see, it only has taken one. There was a no. It still took your diamond, but it will not let you in. This is done with an item filter under the shulker box. The hopper under the shulker box is locked by this redstone torch. So when you press the button, it sends a signal down and unlocks the hopper. The hopper is set up as a basic item filter, and this comparator will send the signal around to this bottom block and will unlock the bottom hopper when it's over the set to mount. Then, once an item is released, it will go through this comparator sending a signal down to the pulse extender down here. Oh, these diamonds are left over from earlier testing. Just ignore them. Down here, we have a sticky piston randomizer where it will pull a redstone block two directions. And based on the way it will pull, it will either send the signal up here to the no, or it will send the signal over here to the yes, which will then open the doors and play the tone. Let's go ahead and head inside. In the first room, we have a tripwire hooked up here that will open the floor. Unlike the Java version, there is no safe spot in this room. If the floor opens, it will open completely. The trip wire is hooked up to this dropper here, which will either send up a yes or a no. It is currently configured for two no's. Since those items will send out a redstone signal of three, we'll fire this pulse extender and turn off this torch and then turn off all the sticky pistons. Down here you can see we are going around the piston under the block. This way when the trip wire activates, it will not activate the piston on both sides. Here is our first key room. When you press the button, it may or may not give you a key. In this case, it gave us nothing. Let's go ahead and head back and try again. In 
and there's our key sound. So we were given one key. The button on the second door is right here. It is hooked up to this pulse extender to keep the door open long enough so you can get through. And then down here we have a basic dropper again going to a hopper that will either send a yes or a no signal. If it's the yes, it will then play the tone and dispense one item from this barrel into this dropper elevator that will place the item in the chest. Moving on is our next room where we have pressure plates and it will randomly push you off. This is done with three of those yes-no circuits. So we'll send a redstone to go three up and then send out the piston. On this one, we have it hooked up to an observer where it will actually send two pulses out. Same with the last one. It's actually hooked up with, to a repeater and therefore it will activate the entire line. And these are also with just basically a yes-no. You could be mean and put two no's in each one, so therefore it's even harder to get through. This key room is buttons the same way. Other than down here, we have a three-way randomizer. So the sticky pistons will pull the redstone block one of three ways. If it pulls it back, you get nothing. If it pulls it this direction, You'll get one pulse and send one key. And if it goes the other direction, the observer will fire twice, giving you two keys. And the final room is a parkour course. The original design does have a moving floor, however, I felt it was hard enough just like this. This can be done. Let's go ahead and try it once in survival and see how far we make it. It looks like we're not going to make it this time, but it can be done. I currently have a video on my Twitter channel that is featuring me running through this several times, and you can see that at the end I do make it through. And at the end, we have the option of getting up to six keys when we walk through the door. So the pressure plates are hooked up to the note blocks. And then down here we have a shulker box randomizer. Where each shulker box will give off a different redstone signal. That redstone signal is hooked up to a pulse extender. And then this observer is observing that signal strength. And as it changes, it will dispense an item into the dropper elevator, into the chest. Let's go ahead and demonstrate.
There we got five keys. We also have our long hallway back to the beginning. And then we got our prize room. This chest is also configured to only accept keys. So if we put diamonds in, it will do nothing. If we put the keys in, it will open. We get our little light show. And then a shulker box. This circuit is quite large, but simple. We have our same item filter here as the front door, where it will only accept keys. It's a little different down here where we're using a piston and an immovable object. The sticky piston allows the redstone signal to turn, and therefore we can turn off the torch. We then have this observer observing another redstone torch which sends a pulse extender up to open the door. It also activates this pulse extender which turns on the lights. So if we go ahead and go up we can see this channel goes up to this door. And this one comes over here. And then we'll activate this sticky piston, which will then activate this observer line, which will just go around in a circle, activating the lights and the note blocks. We have another pulse extender here, and a hopper clock that goes around just to play that one single note that you really can't hear, so it's really not needed but it's added. Down here, we have our shulker box randomizer again, with nine different choices this time. So from there, you have a chance of getting an item out of one of these nine barrels. You can fill these up with whatever you choose, commons, and put some rares in it. But after they leave these, they go into another dropper here, where there's a chance of 1 out of 9 again. So even though there is a good item in there, it has 1 out of 9 chance of getting spit into this hopper line. Which will then come to the final dropper, that again will randomly pick 1 out of the 9 out. And send it up. This will hopefully increase the odds of actually getting the rare item and make it more challenging. It will take a while for this yellow item to get up there because you got to get the first line from the first randomizer. Then this dropper has to dispense it, followed by this final dropper before it goes up. Let's go ahead and try it one time to see how far we make it. Not very far. So this game does have a good chance of give, bringing in lots of diamonds. 
but if you are lucky, you could earn a lot of good stuff from the prizes. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Again, there is a world download available. Please leave any comments and suggestions below for future videos. Thanks for watching.